Hello everyone, I am Malika Rao Mudigonda, Technical Marketing Engineering in the Data Center Group. In this video, I am going to cover about uh, the basics about where to download and access data broker software, what are the different modes of the data broker application, and I am going to touch base about where to download it and what are the important bookmarks and what are the different contents you see in this important bookmark page and how to get started with the first NDB box and uh, a little bit touch upon the TCAM settings on the switch. So uh, primarily the NDB actually works in two modes of deployment, which is called the NX API mode of deployment and the other mode is the open flow mode of deployment. When it comes to the NX API mode of deployment, either it can run on a Linux machine, which is called a centralized mode of deployment. If the same application is going to run in the uh, boot flash of the switch itself, it's going to call, it's, it's called an embedded uh, NX API, right, which is called an embedded application. Uh, when it comes to the downloads, uh, uh, till 3.9 train, in the downloads page, you'll see uh, embedded open flow controller and embedded NX API controller and the centralized NDB controller. So as the name indicate open flow controller, uh, it's, it's basically the mode of deployment is open flow in this case. And in case of the embedded NX API, which is the mode of deployment is NX API, but whereas the application is actually running inside the boot flash of the switch, it's called an embedded NX API. When it comes to the centralized uh, application, uh, the application is running in the Linux machine, which is called centralized mode of deployment. Uh, starting from 3.10 train, open flow is retired and deprecated in the NDB application. Uh, so the only mode of the only uh, software that you can be able to download is the NX API mode of deployment. And in NX API, you get both the variants, which is the centralized deployment software and uh, the embedded NX API software. Uh, let's quickly touch base upon some of the VM requirements. Uh, when it comes to the VM requirements, so basically these VM requirements are all categorized based on the number of NDB boxes that you manage in one single controller. Uh, let's quickly touch base on some of the modes of, um, you know, system settings that you can do, you know, based on the number of the NDB switches added to the controller. Uh, that may there are primarily three categories uh, when it comes to the system requirements. Uh, the first one is a small, small, and the second one is the medium, and the third one is a large. When it comes to the small, the number of virtual CPU cores is six. When it comes to the medium, it's 12. When it comes to the large, it's 18 cores. This is all virtual CPUs. And when it comes to the memory, uh, small, uh, the recommended memory for the small mode of deployment is 8 gig, whereas with the medium, it's 16 gig. With the large, it's 24 gig. Uh, so for all the three categories of uh, the system modes, we, we at least need 40 gig of uh, uh, disk space. When it comes to the operating system, um, so basically it's a 64-bit Linux distribution. Uh, NDB application is agnostic to run in any kind of flavors, any kind of distribution. The minimum Java requirement for the NDB application to run is Java 1.8. Uh, we have a freedom to choose Java from either Oracle or the Amazon Coordinator, which is a free Java, um, you know, is good at, is sufficient enough to run the NDB application. Uh, whereas with the RHEL Enterprise, there are some settings that need to be done for the application to run safe. Um, so these are the trusted uh, mode of settings that you need to do on the firewall. Uh, when it comes to the bookmarks, these are some of the important bookmark page. This is the NDB landing page where you can see um, four interesting categories. The first one is a release notes and the second one is the install and upgrade guides and the configuration guide and the fourth one is uh, the tech notes or the feature implementation guides. Uh, when it comes to the release uh, and uh, release notes and the compatibility guide, um, there you can get what are the different features that was released in that particular in, in that particular release and what was deprecated, what are the open bugs, and you also see the compatible Nexus 9K switches that are qualified for the respective release. For the install and upgrade guides, so there are detailed steps about how to get started and how to install the controller and or how to upgrade the controller in all the modes of possible deployments like central and embedded. Uh, it's going to talk about you know, the startup scripts and how to get started for all the modes of deployment. Uh, when it comes to the configuration guide, this is going to help you to configure all the various features from the NDB UI. Uh, when it comes to the tech nodes, you can see all the complex features in the NDB. Uh, to begin with, there are a few tech nodes 
Uh, say, for example, if you want to leverage Nexus Data Broker to generate a NetFlow, there is a, a white paper which is going to help you to determine what are the steps that, that you need to do to configure all the controller. And uh, here is a verified scalability guide. And uh, when it comes to the small scale of deployment of the controller, uh, you can manage up to 25 switches. When it comes to the medium, it's like up to 50 switches for the large uh, for the large scale that we verified uh, with the large scale of VM requirements, we can run anywhere between 75 to 100 switches. And uh, when it comes to the uh, uh, type of TCP and UDP ports that are used by the NDB application, uh, these are uh, some of the ports that are recommended to open bidirectionally on the firewall for the uh, smooth running of the NDB application. Uh, 12001 port, which is called a gossip router port, uh, which is a TCP port. Uh, this is very crucial for running uh, NDB application, especially in the mode of HA. Uh, and likewise, 8443 is where the NDB application web server is going to run. This is very important port to access the web page. And uh, 6653 is the TCP port, which is an open flow port, uh, which is actually used by the controller to manage the switches in the open flow mode. Um, the other ports like TCP80 and TCP443, these are HTTP and HTTP ports. These are the ports what the controller uses when it is deployed in HTTP, when the controller is actually managing the MDB box in HTTP mode, which is 80. In HTTPS mode, we use SSL uh, to talk to the switches, which is port 443. Uh, to begin with, you know, once you pick up a brand new switch and to make the switch, uh, NDB ready, uh, these are some of the important prerequisites. Um, the, we have to turn on the feature LDP, which is very important to discover the topology of the NDB boxes. And the feature NX API, this is the API what the controller uses uh, to talk to the NDB box. And the spanning tree mode MST, by default, all the Nexus 9K switches in the layer 2 mode are going to run in PVST mode. And uh, we're going to enable the database like 1921 pretty much all the VLANs on the box. So running in PVST mode is not going to scale. That's the reason we change the mode of the uh, pro mode of the spanning tree from PVST to MST. And uh, we are going to disable the spanning tree because uh, every port has to be on the forwarding mode because to adjust to the failure of the topologies. So that's the reason we are going to disable the spanning tree on all the VLANs. And, um, and after that, uh, TCAM is one of the important resources to implement the ACLs, which is very key for the TAP aggregation to work on the Nexus 9K. By default, uh, the ing if if acl is the English region and 1024 uh, setting 1024 entries are needed uh, in are, are given in the default mode uh, to make 1024 entries on the default mode we zero out some of the English regions which are not necessary for the NDB uh, NDB uh, to run um, as you can see while adding the device itself there is a zero touch provisioning feature when you toggle the uh, when you toggle the uh, device prerequisite uh, there are options to reboot the switch for the TCAM and all the scale settings um, choose what is appropriate for you uh, and this is going to bring you the essential TCAM which is very important resource for the tap aggregation to work on the NDP box. Thanks a lot for your time.